What's going on, golf addicts? Welcome to the Genesis Invitational 2023 Betting Preview. We are the Tour Junkies. I'm DB. I got Pat with me. Uh, it's a big event. Tiger's playing. Not sure if you've heard, but Tiger is playing for the first time since the Open Championship at St. Andrews. We are going to see Eldrick, Taunt, Woods tee it up. And uh, listen, it's going to be it's going to be a great week. It's another elevated event or designated event or whatever. And the field is stacked. The Riviera is already one of my favorite courses on tour. It's one of my favorite events on tour. I'm excited to talk about this one. I'm drinking a Manhattan tonight. I'm going bourbon, which has got me up. Mm. So <clears throat> this could are you weird. drinking a good bourbon at least? What are yeah, you drinking? Woodford. Oh yeah, there you go, dude. And I mean, I I just don't normally drink wood. I don't drink. I don't. I don't drink the brown stuff very much anymore. And now it's like like my top lip is numb. Like I can't feel my mustache. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Do Let's you have, have a, a, a. Do you have a certain liquor that makes you like act a certain way? Like, what's your fighting liquor? I don't have a fighting liquor, man. I, I'm I'm a I'm a lover, not a fighter. When I'm drunk, you are a fighter. You I don't you know. I don't are, know. You are you and your like, brother are a fighting fighter. Cup like 2016. I was I had to, I had to be like the referee. referee. I, I was, was the referee. I was fine. I was in my underwear shooting basketball at 2 a.m. Happy as I could be. I've never been happier in my life. And then I got provoked over and over again. Then I got angry. But no, I am not. I no, there is not a liquor that makes me mad. Do you know it's weird that I don't drink enough? Uh, well, I mean. It sounds weird to say that. <laughs> I think tequila is one that oh, I don't. I, don't I, re I really don't know what tequila makes me do because I don't really drink it all that. Does much. it make your clothes fall off? Maybe. Um, if I were stranded on a deserted island and I could only have one liquor, it would be some sort of anejo. It would be an anejo tequila. Mm. If that's all I had, that's what I would have. What does rum make people do? Like, what's the like? I feel like oh, they, God. I don't know. I've never. There had needs to be a list of like, here's what vodka typically does. Here's what bourbon typically does. Here's what rum. So you can like look at it. It's like a card. I feel like you could pull out the card and say like, hmm, what do I want to do tonight? And if you just say, well, <laughs> rum. It seems like a rum night, you know. Or if you're like in an angry mood and like, you know, that's what vodka does to you. Ah, I might want to get a little vodka tonight. Although I don't think vodka really makes people. Angry. I feel like rum makes you go to like a piano bar at the beach and try to pick up, even though you're married, like pick up a person who's half your age. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like that's the rum move, and it doesn't work. It's not successful, but this is what you yeah. try to do. I, I feel it to me seems like it. It it's just like a a maybe. Like you could, you, it just like if you if there was a guide to what tequila is going to do to you, it would just say, hmm, I don't know, maybe spin the wheel a little bit later. Maybe, oh, oh, it's, wheel. it's like the oh, we don't know, you don't know, you don't know what's yeah. going to happen. Um, that's interesting, interesting thought. I I don't rum is literally the only liquor I don't drink. I don't. I, I can't remember I, the last time. Every now and then I'll drink a gin drink. I love no gin. No, for me, no. I don't think I've ever had gin. What? I dude, don't think I've ever had dude, every now and then at a good like, like if you're in a really good like like uh like bougie craft cocktail place where like the bartender's this like 25 year old guy named uh like Holt and he's wearing suspenders and he's got a curly mustache. You order a good gin drink from him, like money. Like I I I like a good gin drink there. I'll have a weird kind of aftertaste. I don't I don't feel that. I don't I don't I think get I've had gin and juice before. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome right. to the Genesis betting show uh, where we're going to talk about some outrights. We're going to give you we're going to change it up, Pat. The, the top 20 this week, the top 20 bets. We're doing a six pack. OK, I'm going to give you two locks. Pat's going to give you two locks and then we're each going to give you a bomb. That's six. OK, we're going to talk outrights. We're going to talk some trends at Riviera. Uh, presented to you by The Nut Hut. Duh. Okay. Because The Nut Hut is kicking ass and taking names. Our boy Joe Idoni is now 21 and 7 in head to head matchups since the century. He is 18 units up if you strictly just tailed his head to head matchups. Awesome. Okay. Just awesome. And The Nut Hut is having a great time. If you, if you don't watch the DFS show, just watch the first 10 minutes. 
when I show you what is happening in the Nut Hut now with our certified PGA professional, teaching professional Blake, who has now joined the Nut Hut, giving people swing tips and video breakdown analysis. We showed Pat's video. It's tremendous. Just go watch that. That's now a new addition if you're paying the Nut Hut price. And remember, the price does change. Effective one Friday, the price is going up. If you've been a member or you are a member, you had an email sent to your inbox on Friday detailing out all the changes. So the price is going up on Friday. It just is what it is, okay? We're long overdue. Read the email. Um, let's talk about the let's talk about the this golf tournament, Pat. This is Riviera. It's a it's an awesome tournament. I love it. Last year, and actually, we've had some success here betting. I had Joaquin Neiman on the card last year. I had Max yeah. Homo on the card in 2021. Uh, Neiman won at 19 under and just ran away with it. It's the it's the best score at this golf tournament since uh, maybe ever. Um, he won at 50 to one. Homo won at 60 to one in a playoff over Tony Finau. Adam Scott at 33 to one. JB Holmes, good lord, at 150 to one. Bubba's won here three times. DJ's won here uh, at nine to one. James Hahn. One here at 200 to one. So, you know, we've definitely seen like kind of a middle range to maybe some bombs, but now you get, you know, just like last week where the field is so much stronger, even stronger than we've seen in years past. But the golf course is going to play a little more difficult than what we've seen. Winning score probably going to be in that 14 to 15 under range. Very West Coast style situation, par 71, 7,300 yards. Uh, Poana greens, average size greens ish. Uh, but you got the Kikuya. You got Kikuya rough, which is South African and Aussie friendly and familiar. You got to deal with that. Very similar to kind of gives you Augusta National vibes, uh, maybe even Quail Hollow vibes. Uh, you don't hit a lot of fairways out here. You don't hit a lot of greens out here. You got to get up and down. You got to scramble. Riff kind of plays like a major championship slightly easier than maybe a PGA or something like that. But it's a, it's a great golf course, and it definitely demands – or at least the trends have shown that experience around Riv and just experience in general s seems to matter. 13 of the last 15 winners had at least three previous wins on the PJ Tour. I found that interesting. Now, that was not the case for Joaquin Neiman or Max Homa, um, but, you know, interesting. 15 of the last 17 winners have played in four Genesis Invitationals. So you got to have you got to have some laps. Yeah. around Riviera. And these are some things that, you know, questions you got to ask yourself when you start looking at names and you start talking about betting outright winners, you got to figure that out. 13 of the last 17 winners have finished 12th or higher at a previous Genesis Invitational. 13 of the last 16 winners played either Pebble Beach or TPC Scottsdale at the Waste Management prior to coming here and playing the Genesis Open. So, um, you know, a few trends there for you. Pat, I'm excited. I mean, Tiger's tournament, he's hosting it. He's playing. We're going to get to see him fresh off the, you know, the PNC father-son challenge back in December. He's had the plantar fascia situation. Let's just talk about Tiger right off the bat. What's your, what do you think is like best case scenario for Tiger? What's the ceiling for him this week? I think best case scenario is, you know, he makes a cut. I okay. think the best case scenario, though, if you're really looking to to Tiger and you're you're wanting to follow him going forward, and everybody does, is what does the health look like? You know, when he played last, um, what was the last tournament he played? The Open Championship. It was the Open Championship. Okay, Miss I thought that's what it was. I remember he played PGA then Open Championship. Yeah, both of them just really really struggling. I mean, he did make the cut at the PGA Championship, then had terrible weather to have to deal with over the weekend. Um, cold all that kind of stuff things that you know when you got an old body like us you know yeah. just the, us, us mid 40s guys you know it gets cold and windy and you know and you got some you got some injuries yeah it can hurt it can hurt some things so i think you want to see tiger maybe make the cut that's that's the best case scenario but then look a little bit healthy like not show any signs of like major like limping and things like that you know with the plantar fasciitis all that kind of stuff so that to me is the ceiling. Um, I agree. I don't think you're going to see much better than that. And here's what I wonder when it comes to a betting standpoint, and and you may have already seen this DV because I haven't had a chance to look. Are there are there going to be any head to heads versus Tiger? Because if there are, I'll be slamming 
the other end of all the head to heads to beat Tiger, but I don't, I don't, I don't think they will. I just don't think they will. Let's see if there's any available currently. Well, I, I may make you eat those words here, Pat. <laughs> so I can find one head to head matchup out already. I mean, we recorded this on a Monday night. Most head to heads come out on Tuesday. Bet Online, which is an offshore book, has a Tiger versus Luke Donald line. And Tiger is the favorite at minus 120. Luke Donald is plus 100. That is the current, the only current head to head matchup available. I oh, see. That's, <laughs> that's not what I expected. You sure you're ready to, you sure you're ready to pound that one? Um, yeah. Isn't yeah. this an in invitational? <laughs> how did Luke Donald yeah, get in here? How did Luke? How did Come Luke on, Donald? give me something better than that. Luke's like, Luke's like, my name's on the list, man. My name's on the I list. I mean, I am captain of the European Ryder Cup team. Uh, that's this should automatically why. put me in. That's why. Um, yeah. How how did Luke Liss get here? Um, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think the upside is a made cut, and we see him walk four rounds and play four rounds. I don't see a top twenty. Uh, here's the question, and I guess I guess you kind of now know what we what side we stand on. Hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube video if you've not already. But here's the question of the week on the betting show tiger to make the cut on FanDuel is plus 158 to miss the cut minus 205 what side are you on tell me why drop that in the comments you taking the minus 205 i would you uh or are you going to you, you want to you want to go ahead and get the value there get the plus money number at plus 158 lay down 100 get 158 back if tiger makes the cut you're there you taking that side. Let us know. I just don't know how you're ever going to bet on Tiger in a situation like that and feel like you're getting what is a fair number from the books. Yeah. I just don't think you're – because people want to see people Tiger. Want, yeah. They want to see him make the cut. So they're going to adjust the number that way. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just whatever. Okay, moving on. Um. All right, let's talk about the top of the board. <clears throat> top of the betting board. Who you got? What do you want? We did the first look betting, the first look outright show this week. It was the first week that it went exclusively to Nut Hut members only. So it was not on YouTube publicly. It was on YouTube. It was an unlisted video that only the U the uh, Nut Hut members got. By the way, if you're a Nut Hut member and you've not yet gone and watched that and you want to watch it, you can find the link under DB's Bomb Shelter. It's there. Uh, I, I I still feel the same way I felt this morning. There are three names in this range that I am interested in. And odds are, you know, I, I think I looked at it, uh, I put it in the nut hut, but between Rom, Rory, Scheffler, Xander, Finau, and Thomas, those six names, most the, the, the early books gave those six names a 41.1% implied odds chance of winning this golf tournament, which is very high. I guarantee you next week when we get to the freaking Honda, which got totally shafted, that total will not be the same for the first six names on the board. Not even close. <laughs> so, you know, odds are we're going to see another short number win this thing like a Scotty Scheffler did last week, although Nick Taylor beat everybody in the field, including John Rahm, except for Scotty Scheffler. Um, Chances are we're going to see that. And so, you know, I mean, DB's big balls betting card is still going to get out there, and we're still going to do our thing. We're going to take our swings, take our shots. I had Sung JM last week. That was the closest name on the, you know, to the top of the board, top of the leaderboard that I, that I had. But it's a tough go for DB in these big balls, in these designated events. It's not a, these designated events do not do DB's balls any favors. Um, because it just means that these short numbers are going to win. Anyway, these three guys are the exact same number now as they were this morning. My three favorites in this range from a value standpoint, from a can they beat John Rahm, Rory, Scotty Scheffler. It is Xander Shoffley at 16 to 1, which you can still find on DK and BetMGM. Tony Finau at 18 to 1, which you can only find now on BetMGM. He has shortened on DraftKings, which he was 18 to 1 on DraftKings this morning. And then Max Homa at 20 to 1 on DK or FanDuel. And I think the, you know, I mean, Finau and, and Xander's record here speaks for itself. 
Oklahoma's record here should speak for itself. People are going to see the miscut last week, or not the miscut, but the lackluster finish uh, from Homa at the Waste Management. Listen, it just it, it's it's whatever. It's whatever. Like Homa is still a stud to get him at twenty to one. I'll take the value. Those three are my guys up top. All right. Well, this is interesting because we have a lot of difference differences here. Um, I do I like. Think you're going to give me a name that I'm that's in my stay away category. I, I probably am, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with two of them um, that are a little higher um, as far as their odds, and then I'm going to go to the shortest odds guy that I like. Okay. I like Colin Morikawa this week at twenty-two to one. I think last week was I'll a little it. bit more of just an outlier for him. He's he's Obviously played well this year. Really should have won at the century. And I, I know he choked down the stretch and, you know, Rom took it. Whatever. Rom played a fantastic round. It was 10, un, 10 under. That helps you win a, win a golf tournament. Um, so but I, think, I just think Colin, we got a little caught up with Colin last week. And I get it. But it was a little bit windy. He, he tends to kind of struggle a little bit in the wind, which sounds funny because he's won the Open Championship, but it was one of those more benign Open Championships where the weather wasn't that tough. So Colin Morikawa, I think, has, has struggled a little bit in, in, in windy-type conditions. I don't, I don't like him on that course either. I like him a lot on this course, and I think the weather's going to be perfect. Colin Morikawa at 22 to one, I think is a good number there. Cause I think that number would probably be like, if he played a lot better last week, I still think you're probably getting like 18 to one, 20 to one. So maybe 22 to one is just a little bit better, better number for him. I like Justin Thomas at 16 to one. I think Justin Thomas also found something last week. Um, after that first round, uh, I loved how he played on the weekend, played absolutely fantastic on the weekend at the waste management has a good history here. He's missed some cuts, but then when, but he's also played extremely well at Riv. So I like him as well at 16 to one. Now, 10 to one. I'm going with Rory. You know, I, I know people hate, they don't want to bet the favorites, but guys, ladies, whoever listening, if you have not seen anything over the last year and a half, the damn favorites are winning and we need to start, we need to start paying attention to it and start just forget about the fact that you think you got to win with a guy who's 20 to 1 or 25 to 1 or whatever because those aren't the guys that are always winning right now, okay? Especially these elevated events. Scheffler didn't do it last week. He was 11 to 1 or 12 to 1. I'll go with Rory this week at 10 to 1. I don't want to go rum, but I'm going to go Rory at 10 to 1. I love him this week. So, there you go. I want to see a damn win, DB, okay? Fired up. Okay. Yeah. No, no. I get it. I get it. Um, I guess there's not as much disagreement as I thought. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to bet Rory at that number just because I've died. I can't. Um, I am quick to get back on the JT train. So I'm with you there. Morikawa, just from the, for the value alone at the plus, you know, at the 20 to one or 22 to one or whatever you, you're getting them at, I, I, I don't, I don't hate that at all. 22 to one on MGM. The, the scrambling does concern me. I mean, he, he still he lost two and a half strokes around the greens in two rounds at Scottsdale, and now he comes to a course where the green and regulation percentage is even less um, on average. So it does concern me. Now, I as long as he's dialed with his irons like he was last year, at Riv, then he, who cares? He, he's not going to need it because he's just going to hit so many, so many, so much more greens than everybody else. But I do agree with you. The number's too attractive to get to get Morikawa here. Um, okay, let's move on. Let's move on to the kind of this mid range. Before we do, remember the Masters contest. You can win five hundred dollars in Masters merch. Okay, me and Pat will be your personal shoppers. We will go to the Masters Pro Shop when we're there this this year, and we will buy five hundred dollars worth of Masters merch. That that you help you you you're gonna send us your sizes your wish list we're gonna shop for you and we're gonna ship it to you right there okay all you have to do to enter the contest this is it this is all you have to do is go to the Apple Podcast app leave a five star review and write a review write something give us some feedback give us something good something you like about the show that's all you got to do if you're a Spotify listener you can't write a review you can just leave a rating give us the five star rating on Spotify. Do both, okay? 
It helps your chances. You got from now until like the week before the Masters to make this happen. We'll announce the winner. Um, we'll reach out to the winners before that. So you got time, but go ahead and knock it out. Okay. $500 in Masters merch. If you've wanted polos, hats, all the stuff, you know, we'll help, we'll help you get it. Okay. All you got to do is leave a review. That's it. Helps the show. We appreciate it. We read all of them. Thank you. All right. Uh, mid range, kind of up to that 75 to one number. This is the biggest range for me in terms of names that I have written down, guys. I'm I'm looking at. Um, so I mean, it, it's kind of hard to decide. I'm gonna have to probably narrow it down. Although DB's Big Balls betting card may just start at this range because I can't get a number shorter. But um, I mean, the the two at the top I'm looking at are Jason Day and Jordan Spieth, both at forty to one on MGM. Uh, let me let me just double check this. Yes, both at forty to one on MGM. This morning we found a better number on Jason Day on the live show. Um, but both of those guys I'm here for, I mean, Jason day, what can you say? I mean, the only thing, the only thing against him right now is just how he's, you know, how he's done at the Genesis, which he's not played a lot, uh, but he's not done very well, but he just seems like a different guy right now. If I had to pick one though, I'm going Jordan speed. He's my favorite one at 40 to one. I mean, the guy led the field in approach last week. The scrambling is there. The putting is not, but he still puts well on POA. This is a true POA spot. There's going to be some POA bounces and some POA bumps at this place. But I just love the short game, and I love that the iron play is there and the upside is there at 40-1. to 1. I mean, Jordan Spieth at 40-1 to 1 is kind of – I mean, I know he's been a little unpredictable, but it's still kind of an automatic bet. 40-1, to 1, okay? 40-1. to 1. So I think we're there on Jordan Spieth. I don't know how – I don't see – the the rest of the season getting forty to one for I don't either. I don't either. Um, From here on out, I don't I don't I don't see it. Yeah, I mean maybe maybe if his uh, I don't know what his record is at Bay Hill, but maybe if his record's not as good at Bay Hill and he doesn't play that great here, he's not going to play next week. Maybe we get the, a similar number in another elevated event at Bay Hill in two weeks, but beyond that, I I can't imagine it either unless he just falls off a cliff again. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not like fully committed to it, but damn, the Hideki number right now is interesting to me. He's 45 to one. He's 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 gone up on DraftKings. He was 40 to one this morning. He's 45 to one on DraftKings right now. I mean, and in the last four years at the Genesis, he's got a T five and a T nine. T thirty nine last year, miscut twenty twenty one. I mean, he does Long term, like we know, Hideki's a tremendous iron player, tremendous around the green, which is what you have to have here. He just, like last week, what happened? Let's see, he lost 4.7 strokes on approach. Let's let's look at this, because I think this is important. Let's look at it round by round, see what happened. Round one on approach, he lost 1.89 strokes. No bueno. Round two, he was positive, 0.39 strokes. Round three, he was positive 0.52 strokes. And round four, he was negative 3.76 strokes. To me, Pat, I don't know what that does for you, but like for me, that actually makes me feel better about Hideki. Because like when I see, oh, he lost 4.7 strokes total, it just feels like, oh, crap. Like he just couldn't hit his irons all week. But he had two rounds there in the middle, round two and round three. Where he was positive. He just didn't have a great round one. I don't know what wave he was in. Maybe let's say maybe he was in the morning. I don't know. Maybe he was in the morning wave on Thursday. It was cold. It was windy. Round four, God knows what happened. I mean, it could have been one or two shots that really cost him that. But it was kind of an outlier week for Hideki in terms of approach play. Um, I'm enticed by him at 45 to 1. So I like that. And then Ricky Fowler. Ricky Fowler. 65 to 1 uh, on DraftKings. Well, actually, let's see where he is now. No, see, this is where the first look show is key. The first look show, he was 65 to 1 on DraftKings, but he was 80 to 1 on another book that a lot of you have access to. And we pounded that this morning. He's now 55 to 1. That's the best number on DraftKings and MGM. But I, I'm a big Fowler guy this week. I'm a believer. I think he I think he's he's there. 
So that's kind of my guys in this range. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to Hideki because I think it's interesting too that Hideki is, I mean, the approach play has been a little suspect lately. Yeah. You know, you looked at it last week. The putting's been really good. Really which good. Is, which is usually what we're like needing that's to have. the thing you're always worried yeah. about we're always talking about if hideki can just have a good putting week well he's had a lot of good putting weeks recently and what's his best putting surface long term pat i'm going to tell you right now db as i pull it up it is poana poana greens poa annua poa annua so that that's sense. where we're on this week um so uh, you just look at the way he's putted it's it's been very good um yeah. You just get the now we got to say okay, well let's get the thing that he does best for his career really, which, which is a great ball striker, um, great with his irons. Let's just get that back to the 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 normal median, and he can win. So I, I like that a lot for Hideki. He's played uh, here eight times. He has two top fives and a ninth and an eleventh out of eight tries. Yeah. I do like, I'm with you too. I like Jason Day. I like Jordan Spieth. A couple okay. more. I'm a big fan of Sam Burns this week. Now, I've seen him at 30 to 1. That's the best number I've seen him at. You know, when you mentioned this earlier, um, you've hit some winners here. You hit Max Homa here. Um, I don't know if you recall the year. That's when the thing, that's when things were good, DB. You know, back in the day when you and I both had a winner going on to the, to the last, fi you know, the final round. You know, I had I had Sam Burns that oh, year. Burns. He was at like eighty to one. You had Max Homa at sixty to one, whatever yep. it was. I know Burns was a little bit longer at the time. God, did we hedge with Finau that that year? I don't remember. I don't think we did any of that. We just let it ride. Let and it I ride. thought I was gonna get a Burns victory and I didn't. And then yeah. you end up getting a Homa victory, which is great. It's fantastic. Yeah. Went for the team. Burns has had sort of a, a up and down experience here at Riviera, but I do I just the way, you know, I was off of him last week. I think I faded him last week, which is stupid. But the guy has just been, I mean, he looked great last week. Um, so at 30 to 1, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to get on Sam Burns this week. Um, even though he missed the cut here last year, I'm okay with it. I just have some sort of block, Pat. And, I, and, I, and I'm, a, I'm a Burns guy. I am. You know that. I, I'm a Burns guy. I, I don't know if it, I think it's the West Coast thing. Like the West Coast thing, I just I feel like Bermuda Burns is thing. I feel like I just love Sam on Bermuda. And then I just I can't I just have the hardest time. I just have the hardest time this week with him. Yeah. I, I mean he's good on all putting surfaces because he's just a good putter. But it's not just putting, it's chipping too, right? Like it's 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 chipping off a tight Bermuda, which we had last week, which he has an advantage on. Now it's Kikuya he's chipping out of. Uh I mean he's a great he's a good scrambler in general. I mean Yeah, he is overall. The yeah. last two his last two events, which are his best two events this year. Well, I guess best if you look at going back to, you know, the new season, not not just this year, meaning twenty twenty three. Um, you know, he's gained putting, he's, he's gained strokes putting, which he always does. He's gained strokes around the green on approach pretty much across the board. He hasn't lost strokes in any category between the American Express and the Phoenix Open. I, I think, I think he's, I think this is a sneaky good spot for Sam Burns, and he's almost won here before. Had, a, I mean, I think he had a 54 hole lead going into that Sunday. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the Farmers and the Genesis, which are two Kikuya courses, he has gained strokes around the green, chipping out of that Kikuya six out of nine times between those two events. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just have the hardest time. Anyway, anybody else in this spot? The other one that intrigues me a little bit is Matthew Fitzpatrick. He's, he's also played really? extremely well here in the past. I think... I'm going to be interested to see what he says this week. If, if we get him, um, you know, He's any kind of comments on uh, yeah. from him at all about his injury, which I don't, I mean, doesn't seem to be a thing. He, he didn't withdraw from any tournament that, that it, that we would have been concerned about with his injury. So 
Yeah, we talked about his iron play lately on the DFS show. Talked about his iron play last week. Kind of broke it down round by round. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think that's probably it for me. I mean, there, there's a couple other names in here that are interesting uh, that may pop up on DB's betting card, but we shall see. Uh, I don't think we mentioned our stay away plays in the 9K range. For me, it's Cam Young. Uh, or in, not in the 9K range. I'm I'm going to the DFS show. But like the shorter ranges, it's like Cam Young. It's the it's the it's the borderline Young Hovland plays, which are like between the 20 and 30 to one spot. I'm not I'm not doing any of that. Mine was Cantley. I'm not. Yeah, to win, it doesn't I, seem I like could, I could see me playing Cantley in DFS, which I still don't even know if I want to do. But to bet them outright, mm -mm. nope. I don't really have a whole lot of long shots this week, DB. I just, I just don't feel like it's going to be. Yeah. Like we could sit here and talk through guys that are long shots, and I have one or two that I like over seventy-five to one. But other than that, it's more just some top twenties and that kind of stuff because I just don't think you're going to get it. I don't think you are. Well, I got a few. But before we get to that, I want to remind everybody to download the Leaderboard app. It is free. The link is in the description of the YouTube video and the podcast, wherever you're listening. The Leaderboard, we've, new, we've just partnered with Leaderboard through the rest of the year. Fantastic golf app that will help you keep track of your own game on the course. It will help facilitate all your wagers with your friends. And even if you don't play golf, you just want to support the Tour Junkies, it's a free app. Download it. Follow me and Pat on the app, Tour Junkies DB, Tour Junkies Pat. You can follow us. We have a public profile, and you're going to get to watch us track all of our rounds of golf throughout the year. I just put up a really, just really e round of golf just Friday or Thursday. It was terrible. You can watch, you can look at my scorecard, you can see my stats. The app tracks your fairways, your greens and reg, your putts, obviously your score, whether you missed left, right, short, long, all the things. It tracks. It's a great app. It also facilitates the gambling side of things for you. So if you're playing stroke play, match play, Nassau skins, nines, whatever you're playing on the golf course, gambling with your buddies, you put in the handicaps, you put in the game, and the app keeps track of everything for you, does all the math, does all the dots, super easy, and then even links with Venmo so that when you're, it's time to pay up, you guys can just, uh, just Venmo. It's just done. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. The other thing I like about it is it also connects to your GIN, your USGA GIN. If you keep your handicap on the USGA, which I do, Pat does as well. I found this out the other day for myself. It was super easy. As soon as the round was done, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't even have to go into my GIN app. It automatically fed all the all the data to the GIN app. And I, I double-checked it, and sure enough, there's my crappy score right there on the GIN app from February 9th, where I shot at 87, okay? Um so you can post your, your rounds there. It's super easy. You can see your revisions. It's shareable. Uh, it's just a great app. It's a tremendous app. They're helping us out. They're a great company. Leaderboard, like I said, link in the description. Um, just a couple guys, you know, a developer, a scratch golfer um, that just decided he wanted to uh, do his own thing and do something he loved. He loved golf. He loved developing uh, stuff on the computer and doing his thing and being a computer person, as Pat would call him. And he's, you know, he and his his team have created a great product. So check it out, the Leaderboard app. It is free to download, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. All right, let's get uh, let's let's talk about the long shots. I got a few in here, Pat. Okay. I mean, this this one we're gonna have to talk about because we 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 barely mentioned his name in DFS as somebody that we kind of liked. But I got to be honest, like. Of all the times that this guy's name has come up, and we may have talked about, you know, could he win? He's never won. He's never freaking won, okay? But he definitely comes into this week, a week where he's had a good track record. He's finished 8th. He's finished 17th here before. And he comes into this week arguably playing better and more consistently than he's ever played before. He's a West Coast guy. He's a bomber. He loves POA. He's got a great short game. His name is Wyndham Clark. And he's 80 to 1, I think is the best number you can get on uh, Wyndham Clark. Man. What? 
Is that the only person that I have up here? Oh, is that is that the only guy you have? Yeah, thank you. I mean, do, do, I, I got him written down, Pat, but I mean, can Wyndham Clark win this tournament? This field? I, I feel like he can. His first, his first win on the PJ Tour and buck the trends? Buck the trends of, you know, previous victory, all this thing. Do you know why he was DQ'd last year? Did he sign like a wrong scorecard or something? I don't know. I I don't know what it is. I'm sure we could find it, but I feel like it was one of those like it, like intentional ejections where things just weren't going well. That's what I feel. That's what yeah, I, I for some reason it's popping in my memory that he did something like sign a wrong scorecard, which sounds so stupid. But yeah, dude, man, he's got a good history here. Two two top twenties before that. He's got a really good game for this course. Okay, let's look at this. Okay. So if I look at his stuff on data golf, <laughs> round one, they have him listed as six over where he gained strokes putting, gained, gained a stroke and a half putting, which is, I mean, in one round for you to gain a stroke and a half putting and still shoot six over is pretty freaking good. He was minus a stroke and a half around the greens. He was minus 3.75 strokes on approach. and He was minus 2.19 strokes off the tee. And then they have nothing registered in round two, three, or four. So he must have de he must have withdrawn or DQ'd after round one, and I don't know why. Well, when you you're have I guess when you're adding up a lot of strokes, it makes it easier to sign a wrong score. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He could have done that. I mean, uh, I don't know. It's crazy. Like eighty to one, it feels like he should be longer than that. It doesn't feel like the best value. I don't know. He's just a name I wanted to throw out there. I am 100% betting Siwoo Kim at 100 to 1. I think you're an idiot if you're not betting Siwoo Kim at 100 to 1. He is playing lights out right now. He has a T3 here in the past. Sorry, 110 to 1 on DraftKings. He has a T3 here in the past. He is loving designated events. Siwoo loves money. Okay. Big money purses. He loves that. He's been getting coaching on Instagram. Siwoo, 110 to 1, done. Like, bet it this morning. Already did it. Hope you got it. And then, I still think I kind of want to go back to a guy who missed the cut last week and pissed me off in DraftKings. Um, but I do think he could actually win here, and he's got experience here, and he's got decent finishes here, and it's Alex Norton. Um. You can get him at 110 to 1 on FanDuel, 80 to 1, 90 to 1, other places. I still think Alex Noren could possibly pull it off here. Not the best week um, off the tee, which normally is his struggle, but uh, around the greens wasn't very good either. Normally he's better than that around the greens. I don't know what I don't know what happened, but he's he's played here four times. He's never missed a cut. He's got a 16th. He's got a 12th. Always gain strokes on approach. I don't know. Alex Norton's been playing really good golf, so I could I could be convinced with Alex Norton. Yeah, I, I see that. Um, just like a kind of come out of nowhere guy, you know. Yeah. I think the guy that's not coming out of nowhere that everybody seems to just want to not play, and maybe he was a one week wonder, but I don't think that's the case. But Sam Ryder, I mean, you can get him at anywhere from one hundred seventy five to one to one hundred ninety to one. Oh, I had him at two fifty earlier. He followed up. You know, that wow, great drop. Yeah. Followed up that great performance at the Farmers with the top 20 last week. He's hot. Sam Ryder's hot, folks. Maybe throw a, a little bit of money on him to win outright. I don't know if that happens, but. Okay. I think Kitayama at 180 to 1 on DraftKings is my, is my super bomb. Kitayama. I'll go there. with Ryder. You can go with Kitty. Here, Kitty, Kitty. I know you love that. We talked about that. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you love coffee, like I love Kurt Kitayama, and you also love golf, you got to check out our friends at Front9Coffee.com. Okay. It's the best coffee by local brew, small batch brewers right here in Augusta, Georgia, supporting the tour junkies, supporting golfers, supporting your coffee addiction. 
front9coffee.com, front the number 9 coffeecom Promo code TJ10 gets you 10% off any order, and you can use that over and over again. We got an update, okay? We got an update. Apparently, people are buying Pat's, Pat's Blend. I'll throw it up on the screen for you YouTubers. Yes. People are buying Pat's Bump and Run Blend because I had a sizable lead in people buying my, my coffee. And, you know, my D, David's Large Bucket of Nuts coffee. But now people are starting to buy Pat's Espresso Milano Bump and Run Blend. That's right. And mm-hmm. the margin is now only three bags. I've sold three more bags. DB's sold three more bags of the Large Bucket of Nuts than, than Pat has of the Bump and Run. We, we, we picked out these flavors, these flavor notes all on our own. My flavor is much more delicious than Pat's. Pat's may be a little bit stronger. Mine's more delicious. And I don't understand how in the world Pat has come back from this. But I understand this because it's a del- it's it's a, it's a way better coffee. No, uh, for the longest time, I've been more headed- versatile. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't make sense. The the there's a link in the description of the YouTube video and the podcast. If you're watching, click on that link. If you like coffee, give it a shot. That you can order it ground you can order it whole bean and they will roast it when you order it so you're getting a fresh batch of coffee they will deliver it to your door within a few days and it's delicious if you use a keurig they have the disposable k cups you could just pour it in there i do that every single day because my wife insists on k cups because she just wants it fast when she wants it so i use the disposable or, or the reusable not disposable the reusable k cup and i make a stronger cup of coffee as a result it's delicious um, so give it a shot. TJ10 gets you 10% off your order, and you can use that code over and over again to keep getting the discount. Beautiful. Thank you to Front9. Okay, Pat, um, let's 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 wrap on this, our top 20s, and we're going to give two locks, okay? Locks. Locks. Keys in, the, keys in there. You just locked, okay? Yeah. And okay. then one bomb... And the qualification is the bomb has to be four to one or longer. Four to one or longer, top 20, two locks. And we have to pivot if if we give each other's locks. Well, if if we have the same lock, let's let's say that we have the same lock. That way people know, well, damn, Pat and DB both like these guys. That's good. And then maybe yeah. we can give a bonus play. Okay. Why don't you give your first lock and we'll go back and forth? All right, first lock for me. And I actually have one that's at uh, at minus 115. But I'm going to go with the plus the plus money lock. Yeah, we're only going plus numbers here. I didn't even think I had to say that. No, th- no. No, we're not doing my You said lock. Yeah, but we're not doing we're not doing minus We don't do that on the tour. Okay, I have a backup. Plus then. All right, I'm not, backup. We're not doing that shit. I have a backup then. Well, you said lock. I mean, I, I know, but I'm talking plus money locks. We, we don't give we don't give minus minus number top twenty locks. We don't do that. On I mean, teams. you go to somewhere else and find money. Them. You can still win money. Yeah, you can, but you don't. You can go to somewhere else for somebody else to tell you that. <laughs> uh, you don't need me to tell you. Oh, Scotty Scheffler minus one sixty five is a lock. No, uh, it wasn't that one. It was a little. It was a little closer. But anyway, all right. I'm gonna go with Jordan Spieth plus one fifty. Is my first lock for a top twenty. Well, damn it. Okay. Well, that was mine. Okay, Jordan. Jordan was mine. Jordan was mine. Okay, then I will go. Jordan is Jordan is my number one. So I'll go to my number two lock, and then I'll see what you do. My number two lock is at plus one sixty five. Jason Day. Oh, okay. All right. We talked about him a little bit. Not the best record here, but he's just coming in so hot. And you got the big $20 million purse, plus 165 T20 Jason Day. I mean, the dude's been absolutely lights out. All right, well, I'm continuing with this because I just absolutely love Sam Burns this week. Plus 130 Sam Mm -hmm. Burns. Plus 130. I'm going to give the people a big number. At plus, actually, let me double check. Let, let me let me just double check. Sam Burns, huh? At plus, ooh, it's gotten shorter. No, it's gotten shorter since I uh, since I wrote this down at like 
six o'clock today. All right, plus 210 on DraftKings is currently the best number, but you could probably shop this because more, more numbers are going to be out by the time this video drops. Plus 210 on DraftKings. Ricky Fowler, I believe. I believe that Fowler is here. He had a T20 in 2021 when he was still garbage, and now he's freaking, he's freaking better. He's back-to-back a T10 and a T11. Okay, runner up at the Zozo. Like, dude's had three T T elevens or better in his last five events. I thought so, you were gonna go Hideki. That plus one eighty five number on Hideki looks very strong to me. Plus one eighty. What, what if I told you I feel as good about Ricky at plus two ten? I really do. Hideki at plus one eighty. Yeah, I really do. Okay, I'm buying it. All right, and now for the bomb. Pat, what you got? I am going to go with Adam Hadwin at plus Ooh. 400. Okay. Adam Hadwin, I just don't think, can win a good damn golf tournament. I know he's won before. <laughs> but the dude oh, can finish in the top 20. Top 10 last week at the Phoenix Open. Had a top 20 at the American Express. Um, he has a good course history here. I like, uh, I like Hadwin. We, we had a great conversation about Hadwin in the DFS show. I can't believe I'm doing this. I, I, I want to go one direction, but th- that direction, my guy has, has not really played this golf course a whole lot. Oh, this number has gotten shorter too since I wrote this down. He was 5-1 to one earlier. Now he's plus 450. I can't believe I'm doing this. This guy's going to make me eat this. <sighs> I'm going Patrick Rogers, the Stanford, California, Beta, Patrick Rogers. Oh God! Who? What are you gonna do when he puts the mitts on? He will have the mitts on because it's gonna be cool. This it's yeah. gonna be cool. He's All gonna put his little, his little I don't mitts, he's gonna put his little mittens on. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him. Don't I don't want to he, hear about him? He's gonna him. have the mittens on. What are you gonna do? I don't want to hear about them. I don't want to. I'm going to be Lloyd Christmas on Dumb and Dumber. La, 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 la. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see no evil, hear, hear no evil, speak no evil. I don't want to hear about it. Um, T12 here in 2021. T15 here in 2019. He's got a 30th, a 26th, a 22nd. Like He, he, he obviously loves Riv. Sneaky backdoor T14 at the Waste Management. 10th at the RSM. I mean, the dude... So far, he's got one, two, three, four, five top 20s in the 2022 2023 season out of 11 events. Like, he's he's doing his thing. So, I'm going to go with the Cali kid, and I'm probably going to regret it. I'll, I'll be cussing him out next, next week. Can't stand the guy. Okay. Don't forget YouTube comment, Tiger to make the cut, plus 158, or miss the cut, minus 205. What side are you on and why? Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, comment the Tiger question, download the leaderboard app in the description, get you some front nine coffee. Don't forget the master's contest. All I got to do is leave a review, five stars, and a write-up. It's going to be a great week. Love the Genesis. We're pumped about it. The Nut Hut is hopping. Our boy Joe Idoni crushing it. 18 units up, 21 and 7 in the head to heads. You got the instructional situation going on in the Nut Hut. It's beautiful. Okay. Everything is beautiful right now. We're happy. You're probably happy. Let's all be happy. Let's hit a winner this week. Let's bend over our bookies this week because next week's going to suck. True. Poor Honda. Poor Honda. Other than a decent course. Poor Honda. Next week could get weird. You know, like Honda's already said that they're withdrawing after next next week, right? They've already said their sponsorship is gone because they got the shaft. We're going to have to think of like a really good analogy for that next week because it's like they're already out, but they got to kind of like, they got to go through it next week, like for a week. You know what I mean? Like for, for next week, the PJ Tour and the Honda are still going to act like they're really happy with each other. But after Sunday night, they're going to be like, you know, like somebody should like 
on sun- Saturday night though, jumping one of the Hondas around the course and like do some donuts or something and say, yeah, fuckers, y'all got to play through this shit. No, dude. No one should ever get in a vehicle and tear up a golf course. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm just saying that's what's going to happen because all the Honda people are going to be pissed. Also, you just you, 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 because of that stupid statement you just made. Now I have to make this explicit show. Oh, well, we should make it explicit anyway. Oh, Lee, dude. Like, and that's just a dumb statement. No, we are not condoning anyone to get in. No, a, of course a, we're not condoning or any vehicle that. to and then. But do you were donuts. saying it's like the superintendent's revenge. You have that cor- that um tournament at your yes. golf course. Yes, yes, but they're not tearing up the golf course. Well, uh, yeah, but you just try to you get to get to do some donuts out there with the Honda, just piss everybody off. What's gonna happen? I'm telling you, I should have ended the podcast before I let you speak on that one. No, that that, that I don't like that one. That was uh, we really don't condone destroying a golf course. <laughs> All right, I don't think people listen to us enough and take us seriously enough to actually listen True. to that. The good news is it might be long. Sh- it might be long shot season. It always is for the Honda. It's a t- freaking shit show. That's true. That is true. That is true. All right. See That's there you go. There's us. another explicit. There we go. Let's have a great week. Just over your bookie. See ya.